Hi, it's Bianca, and I'm gonna take you on a Victorian mansion tour of an octagon house. Let's go. We are here in upstate New York a little bit. It's actually Irvington, New York, which I consider upstate because I'm from the city, but it's really not that far from the GW Bridge. For those of you who don't know what the GW, it is a very expensive tolled bridge to get up here in beautiful Westchester County. <laughs> and that is what we are going to tour today. Please make sure that you're subscribed if you like this video at all, and uh, let's continue with the tour. All right, let's begin our tour of the Armour Steiner Octagon House located in Irvington, New York. Now an octagon house is exactly what it means and exactly what it says. It has eight sides and this came from forward thinkers in the 1800s. There was a book written called The Octagon House written by Orson Squire Fowler, a sexologist and amateur architect. He, among many other forward thinkers at the time, believed it to be a more efficient use of space, energy, and cost than the conventional square home. This house comes with a carrier house, a greenhouse and a bunch of land. This is privately owned. It is a private residence. I did take a tour and paid for it as somebody does live here in the carrier house, whereas the actual octagon house is occupied by the owner of it part-time because this technically serves as somewhat of a historical museum on certain seasons, but I will link everything down in the description. Now, if you're a fan of wraparound porches, you better get prepared and tucked in for this wraparound porch. Of course, as it is an octagon house, it has eight sides, eight panels, eight giant, giant windows lining the entirety of the home. It kind of looks like a bird cage and it's so cool because there are hot pink and red columns everywhere, baby pink and lavender accents. They've also gone ahead and put outdoor patio furniture uh, for the people to sit who are admiring the home and who are taking tours. But of course, as you can imagine, how lovely it would be if you lived here and you could just enjoy a cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee sitting outside and enjoying the nature around you. So the cool part about this house is the owner was obsessed with his dog and his dog is actually embedded on all the iron gates around the home. So you'll see it right here in this creamy, beautiful color. And then we get to the front door. Again, the Victorian home is like a bird cage. So telling which way is the front and which is the back is really dependent on which area you're walking in from. So let's go ahead and go inside into the foyer with this lovely carpet and this of course, again, octagon table to represent the octagon home. Now, this is the ceiling with the light fixtures. I'm not going to go heavily into detail about the pieces of architecture and this and that, but I will say that on top of the ceiling and on these side panels are aluminum. So now we just think of aluminum as Reynolds wrap, and I'm stealing that joke from the tour guide, but I will say this is the good stuff. <laughs> Now you could kind of get a glimpse of how this octagon house had so much light from the inside. We have little corridors and little pockets of things. So over here would be like a sitting room or, you know, a coat closet in modern day times. And behind me is still the foyer and then this big wooden staircase that leads upstairs that we will get to in a moment. And alongside the other side, we have a desk and office space that we're gonna head into now. So this space right here is one of the main rooms. It is technically the formal tea room or a sitting room where you would put your Christmas tray where you would kind of gallivant around with your ladies and drink tea. This room was definitely heavily designed for the ladies and <laughs> I'm not just saying that because the top of the ceiling looks like Ariana Grande's <laughs> perfume bottle, <laughs> but I am saying this because it is a fact. Behind me was this pocket corridor of the desk and seating area, more like an office space would be today. But that room, of course, leads into this room because 
because there's so many corridors like you will see in here. It gets tricky with how many rooms are just on one floor because there's technically eight <laughs> and you have to fill up eight spaces in certain ways and each one had a purpose. So this one of course had a lovely Christmas tree and on the Christmas tree had some Victorian ornaments and this home was definitely dedicated to the historic side of things and antiques and preservation and having certain things come from certain places. So I believe the tour guide mentioned that these chairs came from a place in Brooklyn. I could be lying about that, but I am almost positive that that is what I remembered. <laughs> and across from this room, we walk straight into the dining room. So this table is set up in the traditional way that a Victorian would eat Christmas dinner. And of course, with a little bit of flair, there are some antiques, there are some lovely things. And then this was just a another room because again, guys, there were so many rooms kind of surrounding the main rooms of the house because there are eight pockets to kind of get into where the window sat and everything had wooden doors in between. So it really made for a unique experience walking through the home because no matter what door you walk through, you're going to enter a place that you may not have seen before and a pocket of something that means something to somebody. Uh, now we are getting to this back side of the foyer, which was just absolutely gorgeous. These dark wood hallways, this dark green carpet. It was just so beautiful and of course decorated for Christmas time and the holidays. I can't even imagine this first snowfall and how they look in here. Now we can move on to where the kitchen is. Now this kitchen is updated, but they tried to give uh, homage to what the Victorian kitchen would look like and would be. So this is a stove, a burner stove. There's a boiler right here. You could see these countertops are quite new. A sink, that little soap says octagon for the octagon house. There's an older telephone, but then under it, you see that security system is obviously new. And over here, if you see this little brown box on the wall, you could tell that that is where someone would write letters or mail things to, and it's just a standing desk. And behind here would be, what would you call like a butler's pantry? Now we'll head up to the first floor holding the banister in the most Victorian girl fashion aesthetic. And you'll see that the carpet continues up here and just the beautiful wood goes all the way up. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment when you just point the camera up and you see all of the stairs and how much more of a house that there is. So this is one main room and that back corner was actually a bathroom. Um, I don't think that I showed that on this camera, but I will show you another bathroom in a moment. You could see that there's a beautiful view. This is where a bedroom, like the master bedroom would be. Beautiful antique furniture. It's all black. The windows are gorgeous. You see this big dresser and then you'll see a vanity right here to the left. And then when we walk out of here, there are a few more rooms. I did not get to go into them, but they were like a child's bedroom, a nursery. The big grandness of the home, as you could tell, is these stairs that go all the way up to the middle because there are about three floors in here. So here's a glimpse at what I didn't get to walk into, but you guys could see through the viewpoint of the camera. Getting back to where I'll show you the bathroom, this was a small powder room. And when I say small, I really mean emphasis on small. It was just a toilet and a pull down sink situation. Uh, and then we're going to walk upstairs to the second floor where there is a giant grand room that I think you guys will enjoy. So obviously I kept trying to find pieces of the home that I wanted to show you guys because I was so effortlessly intrigued by. Now up there is this little attic space with a spiral staircase. Unfortunately, we were not allowed up there because it was a fire hazard. 
uh, for people to go up there, I guess like museum rules or something like that. But I'll get back to that in a moment. We're gonna kind of sift around and go around the octagon once again. And we're going to enter the room of curiosities and oddities. And then we can totally show you guys what else is up here. This was my favorite floor by far. It was so cool, it was so unique, it was so Victorian. All of these antiques, all of these oddities, all of these cool quirky things, the butterflies on the wall, kind of like those taxidermy-esque situations where you just look at things and you're like, oh my God, am I in a sci-fi film? This is awesome. So we kind of walked around again to that big grand room, which had a ceiling that looked like this. It was so magical and this room was very based around Egypt. If you want to look into it, again, I'll link some things in the description of what you would like to read about this specific house. Again, I'm not a historian. I just really love architecture and Victorian homes and witchcraft and old things that make my heart strings feel happy. This was a nursery also on that second floor and they had it set up like Christmas with the trains and if you see these little stained windows are just letting all the light bask in and it's just this most beautiful array of light and airiness. Um, and of course the light and airiness comes from that top of that octagon house which looks like that. That is the photo of what up there looks like. Again, unfortunately I'm not able to show it to you but you can see pictures online and just really feel that bird cage vibe of that top of the crow's nest looking down on everything, the staircases below you, and how beautiful the wooden feel and the homey coziness really feels in this octagon house. So just like every museum, we ended up in the basement of the Victorian house at a gift shop, which also had bathrooms that were very old looking, but very cool and a little bit modern uh, and workable. So we hung out on the porch for a little while. Again, this porch was humongous. It was stunning. It was gorgeous. The panels on top, like that roof, just everything. Like I don't even have words to describe how lovely this is. Obviously you guys can see it for yourself, uh, but in person it is, so euphoric. It's something you've never seen before. It kind of takes your breath away. Like, you know, when you're driving on a really weird and windy road, that small town vibe, and you see this crazy house in the middle of nowhere, and it, you just think to yourself, how can someone build something like that, especially in the 1800s? And it was awesome. So we hung around on the grounds for a little bit until it was time to go head out and hang out with our friends for the rest of the day. And of course, reminisce about the time we went to an octagon house in the middle of winter. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and this tour. I have a few other Victorian mansion tours on my channel. I like to go to a bunch of random places. I, I love this shit. I live for this shit. I breathe for this shit. The stylistic tendencies of certain rooms and the, the feelings they make you feel and how they kind of make you slow down in a world that's moving pretty fast lately is so oh, like it's just very important to me and i love it i'm gonna link a few other mansion tours and home tours that i've stayed at up here somewhere in the cards as well as down in the description box but i do post a lot of witchcraft on my channel as well as travel vlogs and escapades and concerts please feel free to stick around if you like this video subscribe i hope you guys have a really lovely day and week and i will see you hopefully in my next video bye <laughs>